Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew in Price here once again, also known as Altered Zigo. And today's video is something I've been working on recently. It's something that I think is kind of new. Um, I know that someone named uh, Space Monkey JTV uh, published a video uh, talking about this for a track selector or something like this. I couldn't quite tell how his mechanism worked about a little over a year ago. And uh, but this is a new design that I came up with and it's uh, something that I haven't seen a lot of people do so I thought I'd do a video on it. Um, like I said I've only found one person that did it and before we get too far into it let me go through and tell you what this is. Basically this is a um, a pulse selection uh, terminal. I get, really it's just a pulse selector. So for example if we want to turn on this on the right, we press this button and it'll turn that on and you can see I've got a ton of repeaters here because it allows us to more easily monitor where the pulse is and it turns those off. And if I want to turn on the light on the left, again you'll have to wait for the delay but there we go and the light on the left will turn on. Now what's good about this system or where I guess it's useful is in the sense that it only uses one piece of redstone all with the way across. Now you can see right here there's a lot more redstone but it's uh, one of those things where it's a lot easier to run wiring this way especially if you're going longer distances for like uh, you know different terminals along a uh, minecart uh, railway and actually I think I need one of those somewhere in here I think right about here um, but it allows you to use just a single uh, you know redstone wire to communicate with multiple devices and how it's doing this, as you saw before, it's sending these uh, pulses that are a very particular length. And we can see there it turns on the uh, right hand light. And that's controlled by this RS, uh, RS NOR latch. So I guess to give a brief explanation of how this works. So we have our button and it goes into here, which is a pulse shortener. And we want to shorten the pulse because it's easier to measure out the pulses uh, if we're if it's already shortened down to something um, that is uh, basically we have a little bit more control over it uh, you could just you work with the standard buttons uh, timer and then just add on to it but that becomes a problem over here we have to add more repeaters uh, to allow for that so what's happening here is this is shortening the pulse then it's going through the here and the RS NOR latch is going to turn off for a particular amount of time that's controlled by these repeaters here. Then it goes along this wire and it first gets to this uh, to this station or this light and what it what it's going to do is when it goes into here it's going to store essentially the signal in these repeaters uh, for you know the full delay on these repeaters so while it's storing that signal this goes through and it d checks to see if it's the correct length for this station now for this to work properly you have to put the longest delays first uh, because what's going to happen is it's going to check and see if the delay is long enough to turn on this R RS NOR latch and we're doing that by running uh, the power into here and then we have a series of repeaters up top and if uh, it's going to drop this piston and if the uh, signal is long enough that it can make it this its way through the block when the piston does drop then it's going to turn off our uh, turn on the RS NOR latch but if that doesn't happen then the power through uh, if that doesn't happen then this piston stays uh, lowered so that it can go on to the next station. Now if it does turn it off 
uh, I built it in a circuit to turn off these lights. So what happens is if it does turn this on and this, uh, this light has been selected, then it sends out power up here, turns on this RS Snore latch, which I don't think is actually necessary anymore since I rewired this, but it's I'm just leaving it there because it's working right now. Um, but it goes through and it will uh, look, <clears throat> raise this block so that the uh, pulse then can't get over there, and then it sh sends a very short pulse from here that's too short for any of those uh, lights over there to uh, turn on and it basically goes ahead and turns them off for us. Now over here because they're all clustered together it uh, becomes a lot easier because I can use RS nor latches that will reset one another so I don't have to use a lot of this uh, extra stuff so basically it goes through and it uh, initially turns off all the RS nor latches when the pulse initially gets there then it again checks the longest one first and if it's if it's a long enough pulse it'll drop the block and uh, allow it to come into here if it's not uh, long enough then it'll go on to the next one and basically these blocks here are dropped uh, so that like it'll check this one first and there's enough of a delay here that it can check it before the pulse gets to the second light and if the uh, if this light gets activated, <clears throat> then it automatically retracts these pistons, and it moves them up and out of the way where the pulse cannot go through to the second light. Because obviously, if it's long enough for the first or uh, for this light here, it would be long enough for this light and this light. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So we retract these pistons so the pulse can't go through here. And then obviously with here, it's going to do the same thing. And this is the shortest pulse, as you can see. It's uh, no delay on the repeater uh, for this one. And it's just going to go through after the, uh, the majority of the repeaters for this one. And it'll go through another four repeaters and come out and then go through this one. And if it's not short, if it's uh, not long enough for this one to activate, then they just stay off. So I kind of hope that makes sense. It's I know it probably sounds a little bit complicated, but it's not that that bad basically you're just controlling the length now of the pulse and then all these terminals are set up to uh, essentially decode that pulse length so that it'll know what to do um, obviously this system right now is a little bit bulky but this is the just my second build on this type of a design so I'm hoping that I can um, work to compact this and make it easier to build and in fact if uh, there's enough of an interest I might do it like continue to work with it and come up with a tutorial uh, telling people how to build these uh, different stations and also the uh, um, the variable pulse uh, generator terminal uh, I guess so that's really all I had to show today it's I I know it's uh, I'm not the best at explaining this because, you know, obviously I've been working on it for a little while. So it's like, yeah, it really makes sense to me. It's not all that difficult, but I understand for someone new it might be. So, you know, feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead for this one and post the world file because I think this is something that a lot of people would be interested in. Because I know, like with me, when I've been working, you know, on different projects and things, you get where you want to be able to activate multiple uh, devices. Uh, from a distance but you have to run like five or six wires through for each device or for uh, all the different devices and with this if you do it right and you have enough room on the other side to uh, decode the signal and it's just a matter of running uh, you know a whole bunch of wiring or uh, just one wire it becomes a lot easier uh, especially for longer lengths also, uh, like I said, it could be used for uh, train uh, terminal selection. And in fact, if you wanted to, if you did want to go, uh, it would be it becomes more difficult once you, the more devices you start adding because for each one you start have to adjust, ha having to adjust uh, the delays and all of this. And in fact, if you're working on something that's pretty far away, I would suggest having, uh, especially in a survival mode, I would suggest having someone help you out with it because it, it, it is really hard sometimes to tell what's happening because you're all the way over here and what's, you know, the device is actually acting, activating over here. That's why I had all those repeaters 
in the middle so I could kind of see what was happening and also so that I could fly across uh, before the signal got there. But anyways, I like I said, I'm going to post the world file for this one. Um, you know, if it's something that you like or you find interesting, let me know and I will be uh, certain to, you know, continue to work with this, maybe post uh, a better explanation of all of this. Right now I don't have all the, any of this labeled. Um, I'm hoping that this video will ser serve as the purpose of labeling because I don't really want to have to go through and put signs all over the place. But if it is necessary, obviously, you know, I'm more than willing to do that. So I guess, you know, as usual, just let me know what you think. And if this is interesting, you know, like I said, I'll be happy to work on it some more. Or if you come up with something good, you know, let me know. I'd be happy to, you know, I'd like to look at it, you know. And I'd, obviously, if you run into issues with something you're building, um, you know, I'd be happy to help you as much as I can. So once again, this is Andrew in Price thanking you for watching this video and telling you to have a good day and good gaming. Bye.